Watch you guys got another video here for you. Important things to consider when choosing a power supply. So many times I see people using cheap quality power supplies. So the first thing to look at is price. I picked this one up on a special deal, which was £37.50. And pence. And that is for a 550 watt 80 plus bronze fully modular power supply. Now this uh, generic black builder 500 watt PSU come in that pre-built system that I got. You can see here it's very, very cheap, £18. Probably getting these for about £8 each or even less. And you can see it doesn't hardly have any connectors on it. So the second thing I want to take a look at is the wattage. This is very important. If we look at the weight of this generic black version, it weighs as much as a box of feathers. There's hardly any weight in it at all. And if we look at the wattage on the side here, you can see it doesn't have a great specification. The 12 volt rail only has 264 watts on it. Now the way you get calculation of that is by calculating the 12 volts times 22 amps, and that gives you 264. If you calculate all of the other uh, specifications on there that will give you a total of 500 watts so really a good power supply will be giving you a very high wattage on the 12 volt rail because this is the main one that we're going to be using for all of our hardware that we put inside of our computer so generally the build quality on this is pretty poor it's pretty lightweight there's no branding to it no certification and the cables on here are pretty bad so the cables, looking at these, these are ketchup and mustard cables, we call them. Very thin quality cables, a very uh, low grade cable here. The connectors are not that great either. And this is a telltale sign of a really cheap power supply. You can see they've used very low quality parts. And this is what we would call a system builder power supply, which you would get in these pre-built systems, especially the ones you see online. Uh, this cable here is for your CPU that goes to the motherboard and there's no sleeving on here. They've cut back all of the cost and it doesn't cost them much to put these together. A 24 pin looks uh, pretty ropey as well. As, and you can see the cable thickness there is not that great. This thing's going to get super toasty when running a, a standalone GPU with this a particular power supply. And I can guarantee you if you try to run a, a GPU which is recommended a 500 watt power supply with this power supply, it's not going to last that long and possibly blow up and take all your components with it. So let's take a look at this 550 watt EVGA power supply. Now this is uh, just 50 watts more than the actual uh, cheap generic builder power supply there. You can see they've put more detail on the back of the box. They're giving you loads of information. You're not getting any of this information when you buy these cheap power supplies, you can pick them cheap power supplies up for as little as 13 or 10 pounds online. They're very, very cheap and they always claim they're high wattage, but they're just not. When you check the box here, it will give you loads of specifications, which we'll take a closer look at once we get it out of the box. So I wanted to take a look and show you what you can get when you buy a quality product here. They do different sizes of power supplies, depending on how much power you need. You get all your cable ties inside here as well. You're going to get all of your cables. Now, because this is modular, this means that you get all of the cables separate and you can just use the ones you want to use. They're fully braided. They're high quality uh, cables here. And you can also see they've been blacked out along the edges. So you don't see that ketchup and mustard sort of uh, look there, which is all those different colors. And it just looks a little bit nicer. And the build quality on here is a lot better compared to uh, this cheap budget build uh, type of power supply. You can see uh, the connectors are a lot better quality and even the cabling as well. So that's why I always suggest that you buy a branded uh, piece of hardware from a reputable company. And there's loads of them out there. It's not just EVGA. There's loads of good companies that sell good quality power supplies. You won't find any information online about these generic builder power supplies, but I can guarantee you, you can head over to any of the websites for those branded parts and you will get a full detailed report of what that power supply can actually deliver. So you're going to get extra features on here like eco switch here and also power switch and your uh, kettle lead input here. Moving on to here, we're going to be talking about the modularity of this one, which is a fully modular power supply. Now there's normally three types, direct cable, which is all the PSU cables come from the PSU housing directly. 
which you normally get on cheaper models and it's not great for uh, cable management. You get the semi-modular, which is all your necessary cables come from the PSU housing. These are generally uh, the 24 pin, the CPU power connector, and also the PCI Express connector. All of the other ones will be separate and you plug them in separately. The fully modular one is all cables are removable, making the installation extremely easy and sleek, as you can see here. This is a fully modular version, and these are generally the more uh, sought after type of power supplies because cable management becomes a lot more easier and it's a lot more cleaner. If we take a look at the power ratings on here, you can see on the 12 volt rail, if you add those up, it will give you a total of 550 watts on the 12 volt rail. So when they say 550 watts, you are getting 550 watts on that 12 volt rail. 80 plus uh, bronze certificate has been awarded for this power supply. That means it's been tested and certified to 80 plus bronze. That's the efficiency rating, which we'll talk about in a second. So in general, this is what you're going to get for a good quality power supply compared to this piece of garbage, which is a complete fire hazard and more than likely going to end up blowing and taking all of your hardware with it which is not a really good thing to do. So let's take a look at the efficiency ratings here. You can see this one is 80 plus of bronze and the cheaper power supply doesn't have any sort of efficiency rating. So if a power supply with 50% efficiency uh, rating is required to provide 50 watts of power to a load, it will draw 100 watts from the wall. The other 50% gets wasted as heat and other losses. So if we use a 90% efficiency power supply, uh, it will draw 56 watts to the supply, the same load, meaning that it has fewer losses and uses less power from the wall to provide the same output power. Now, this is obviously a, a, a quite a complex uh, topic. And again, I'll put the chart up here so you can see the official ratings for bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium. Uh, the 80 plus white one there, that is just a, a white label type power supply. The cheap generic power supply that we've got here doesn't even have an efficiency rating. So another thing you can do with these is obviously with a good quality power supply, you're going to get a good warranty with these. And they generally put five and 10 year warranties on these, which means that they're guaranteeing their product to be very reliable and very good and you would get a replacement if anything happened to it. Also, another thing to look out for is the spec sheets. You can generally find all the information on good quality power supplies uh, online, and they will give you every bit of information you need, whereas these cheap generic power supplies that come from China don't have any sort of information available to them. You can see that it's got all of the protection that you require, which means it's giving you heavy duty protection. It's using OVP, over voltage protection, UVP, under voltage protection, OCP, over current protection, OPP, over power protection, and SCP, which is short circuit protection, and OTP, which is over temperature protection. You're probably more than likely not going to get a lot of those in those cheap uh, generic builder power supplies. Also, you're going to get customer service support with a good quality power supply and good luck trying to get any support with those cheap generic uh, power supplies. Now, of course, form factor will take a role in what you choose as well. That's the size of the power supply, depending on what case you're using, you have to make sure it fits inside the case. And another thing to take into account as well is that if you're spending all of that money on really expensive hardware, then why are you buying a cheap power supply? If you have a cheap power supply and you're using a high-end uh, graphics card or something like that and this blows it will more than likely blow that graphics card as well and any other components that it's using in that build so don't cheap out on your power supplies always buy a reputable power supply with uh, good quality parts in there and you should have trouble free computing with that power supply for many 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 years whereas those cheap uh, generic builder ones will probably not even last a year. And yes, some of these do have a one year warranty on them, but again, they're not gonna warranty all of your whole computer for that power supply. And when that blows, they'll just replace the power supply, which cost like 15 pounds. They're never gonna replace all of your hardware uh, with all brand new parts. So bear that in mind as well. Anyway, I hope this information has been useful to you. 
in choosing the right power supply for your computer build. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now.